Traders, it continues to be a very unique and exciting trading environment. And as always, I'm looking very forward to sharing my trade plans, thoughts, and ideas with all of you. Now, like last week's watch list, I'm going to be sharing my plans for both large and small caps in the overall market, um, you know, really given the opportunity set and, and, and based on where I'm seeing success in my own trading. Now, regarding my trade and opportunity reviews as well, I've seen a lot of comments on that. Um, I only do that thoroughly during my weekly inside access meeting. Now, let's start with my plans for individual small caps, starting with FFIE. And overall, these plans are uncorrelated to the overall market's direction. Um, now, a quick note on small caps, the cycle that we're in, it continues to be very hot for small caps, um, you know, judging by the amount of day one gappers that have been closing uh, in the green after experiencing significant flows and gaps. Uh, and really, once day one moves, fail, fails sharply off the open um, into late to uh, late uh, morning, early afternoon. Um, once we start to see VWAP reclaims on subdued volume begin to fail and not reclaim, um, I'll know that that cycle is slowly starting to shift. Now with FFIE, specifically, I'm looking for uh, lower highs and pops too short in the stock. Now, FFIE was obviously a tremendous momentum mover on Thursday and Friday. Um, and of course, from a fundamental perspective, um, you know, the company's well known and, and we're all clued up on, on what it's all about. Now, um, that was obviously because it ran recently in May, um, you know, followed by um, after we had the initial move up in, in GameStop and AMC. Now, after Friday's morning blowout in the pre-market, followed by that um, pretty sharp failure and engulfing failure off of the open, backside was confirmed off the open with the pre-market high rejection um, and really nice failure straight into the morning. Um, and that was also down on sustained volume. So the backside was confirmed. Um, and for me, going forward, the only opportunity that, that I really see here, as long as the multi-day VWAPs are looking, you know, around 880s to 9, developing two-day VWAP coming into Monday and, and early on in the week, um, as long as those reclaims and pops fail to hold, um, and as long as we don't see chop above that key zone, um, I'm going to be looking to get short versus the day's high. Ideally, best case scenario, this has a short-lived SSR push early in the week, um, ideally towards 850 through 9, maybe 9 plus for, for a quick failed follow-through push, um, last-ditch attempt at another little secondary squeeze. Um, you know, that would get me very excited and that would get me um, to initiate a short position, likely hold a core as a swing short position as well versus the day's high. Um, and I would plan to hold that, as I said, versus the day's high while trimming the position into seven as target one support from Friday. Um, and, you know, I'm going to really aim to hold this um, for multiple days, looking for a move closer um, for a move back near five. Now on the back burner, some several other small caps that I'm going to be looking to short. First one, GDC. Um, you know, similar blowout, similar move in the pre-market to FFIE. Obviously, this had a, a, a more sustained move um, over multiple days. Um, but like FFIE, I'm looking for failed follow-through. Any pops towards that two-day VWAP A+. Plus. Um, you know, but at the same time, um, while I see this giving back most of its move uh, in the short term and, and trading back down towards three and twos, um, you know, if it pops, it, it could pop further than, than I think um, in the immediate term. Um, and that's simply based on the trickery that I've noticed on the tape um, and a little bit of, you know, somewhat rigged action that I've, I've, I've noticed. And so just being aware of that, not to get too caught too soon, too early on the front side of any secondary pop um, and really just wait for, for that move to exhaust, wait for the turn and, and for a defined level to be able to risk against with confidence. Um, MNTS, lastly, last small cap on the list. Um, and very similar to the other two, although this one, um, you know, far more uh, overhead um, and, and resistance exists now to confidently scale into a pop. Um, and really, first area I'm interested in would be 130s. Once again, two-day VWAP developing uh, for Monday. Uh, any push to 130 plus would get me interested looking to scale the short, adding aggressively once I get that turn and confirmation, um, and then looking to piece out one and below one. And now focus, um, you know, definitely shifts. Uh, into the upcoming week, it's certainly shifting to favor long swings. Uh, and I will explain what I mean by that. So let's go over to the overall market to put the SPY up here. Um, so, you know, as I've been going over in detail in my inside access meetings, um, 
I'm really looking for the market to consolidate and digest this move. We got the pullback over multiple days, Tuesday, Thursday provided fantastic pullback opportunities. We had market internals, which confirmed those moves and really allowed us to, uh, to react quite confidently uh, without hesitation um, and also signaled a, a, a really loud and um, confidently a, a change of character and shift in momentum intraday. Um, all of those internals, which, which for the previous eight to nine days, we, we just have not seen them um, show up as they did. Um, now, favoring the downside, of course. Now, I'm looking for the market to consolidate. Like I said, I wasn't looking for a significant pullback, a market crash, a retest of the lows. Um, but I need to see previous resistance hold firm as newfound support uh, around this 555 area. Um, and I need to see some energy bold in the market to, to, I would say, gain that energy and correct itself over time um, by some sideways action and, and confidently holding above its 50-day and now rising five days. So it's SPY obviously showing early signs of consolidation here. Uh, we've had a few days above this 555 developing area of support. And as long as the market can maintain its footing, hold above this critical zone, uh, I'm gonna shift my focus um, to really include some directional long swings, which, which hasn't been the focus for the previous um, you know, couple of weeks. On the flip side, obviously, if the market breaks below its rising five-day moving average, we take out this 555 support, then you know I see 550 as, as the next potential zone for a higher low within this uptrend uh, and for some from stabilization. Um, so it's not you know really all hands off. We get below this 555 zone, uh, but let's see if we can then base at 550 and develop a higher low and just some energy within this uptrend. Um, now, within that, from a long perspective, um, you know, with, with, with that backdrop in mind, I'm, I'm seeking out relative strength and attractive, uh, you know, technicals for my watches. So, for example, what do I mean by that? Last week, the biotech sector, we are looking at XIBB uh, or we're looking at XBI, but the biotech sector really, uh, in many regards, led the way um, and were one of the strongest sectors and areas uh, on the week. Now, they just closed shy, IBB, uh, XBI, you know, whether you're looking at that either or, they, they both closed shy, just shy of their 52-week highs and, and really near a significant breakout um, area um, across a higher time frame as well after a significant and lengthy base over multiple years. Um, so a lot of energy has been, um, been pent up there and uh, it's, it's fairly interesting given the relative strength in the short term and where we're at on a higher time frame near 52-week highs, um, the setup that now exists. So from now on, for me, a focus is going to be developing, uh, identifying and developing plans and identifying setups in the most well-positioned stocks within this sector for potential breakouts and momentum to the upside. Um, alternatively, um, similar to what I was just uh, talking about in SPY, I'm also going to be eyeing the IBB for further consolidation, given you know we've this almost 10% move off of the most recent pivot lows. Um, you know, I'd prefer for a few more days of sideways action some higher lows within that um, and compression in price and volume before we get a breakout in both. Um, but, you know, a week of sideways action um, before, uh, you know, a potential breakout in price and volume occurs would just really increase my confidence and at the same time um, allow me to build um, a, a larger list of potential sympathy plays um, within the sector and those that I find most technically appealing from a standpoint of risk reward as well, um, as well as giving additional time to really monitor price action and, and gain more confidence in, in leaders and laggers. Um, so that's kind of what I'm watching. Um, most of my focus continues to be on small caps for the upcoming week, split between some swing ideas once I have confirmation, as well as some um, really momentum intraday driven ideas and trading. Of course, new names pop up every day, which takes some of the focus as well. Um, and then given the market action and some sideways action that I'm seeing and some stabilization and the market regained its footing while volatility has completely um, subsided, um, I'm opening it up again to directional breakouts from a long swing perspective, higher time frame, um, as that appears to be really um, regaining its, um, its strength and and uh, I would say focus within the market. So let me know what else you've got on your watch list for the upcoming week. And uh, let me know if you're watching any of the same stocks as me and you perhaps have different plans or different thoughts or different bites. Drop it in the comments and I'll see you all next week. So you're an active trader, not doing as well as you want, not doing as well as you deserve. And you just can't figure out why you can't become profitable no matter how hard you try. Well, let me show you why. This is your competition. The traders in this room, 
This room right here is full of elite traders, some of whom are making seven and even eight figures a year. In fact, our top guys have made nearly 20 million each in net trading profits in a single year. Let's head to my office so I can share more. So you're probably used to seeing videos of lavish trader lifestyles, trading gurus, trading off of a laptop for an hour a day, heck, maybe even 15 minutes a day, and then them relaxing on some secluded beach for the rest of the day. Well, all I can tell you is that our traders train like pro athletes. They live and breathe the markets and are continually working on their trading skills. Because at our firm, that's what we found it really takes to make it in this game. I'm Mike Bellafieri, co-founder and managing partner of SMB Capital, one of the world's top proprietary trading firms located in Midtown Manhattan. And we're always looking for trading talent to hire and develop. And not just to trade in-house on our desk, but also to trade from their own home, entirely using our firm's capital. And we have numerous traders doing just that, allowing them to make upwards of seven figures trading the firm's capital without risking their own money. But to even get a shot at something like that, you need to have the right training. That's why we're doing a new free online presentation in which we share how you can get an interview with SMB to become an in-house or remote trader, trading firm capital without risking yours and gaining access to all of our firm's coaching and resources. And the best part, you don't have to be a profitable trader yet. In fact, we prefer to mold profitable traders with our methods and our techniques. That's why we have just three simple criteria that can earn anyone an interview. We're looking for highly ambitious and determined traders who fit our culture first and foremost. So if you believe that could be you, sign up for the free one hour online presentation by clicking the link that's in your top right corner of your screen now.